Okay, welcome back to your viewers. Um, today, as you can see, I am going to start talking about Alien RPG. The reason is, I have played it more than one occasion, tried to run a campaign, I've done a number of Halloween one-shots with this, uh, this system, and uh, I plan on doing an actual play one shot for y'all I just refuse to give a date at this point because every time I do something comes up and I have to postpone it or cancel or something so but it's coming it's it's gonna happen uh, before I get into the deep dive however a couple things I want to address number one if you're new to this channel this is what I do I play the games I record myself playing games and then I talk about them um, nothing against the flip through review but I have found that playing a game is sometimes different than actually reading about it. Uh, so while you might get something out of the flip-through view, I don't always do. So I'd rather do these deep dives and talk about the modules, the, the supplements, and the game systems uh, after I've played them. Secondly, and this is just to address the most recent RPG... Um, drama on the internet uh, i don't get paid to do any of this uh, this is my i'm doing it for fun if it ever stops being fun i'll stop making videos <laughs> okay i'm not getting paid uh no one's sending me anything i've bought all these books and modules and whatnot uh and and, and this channel is really more an excuse for me to play them find people who are interested in playing them with me recording them and then talking about them uh, I, I'm doing this because the RPG hobby is an amazing hobby. I love this hobby. It's my favorite thing to do, but it's also it can also be expensive. And I know not everyone has dis the disposable income to just drop, you know, their hard-earned cash onto something. So hope maybe you know the thought is maybe what I do here might help you make a decision as to whether or not you want to drop your cash onto a game. So, and that's why I always say, if there's a game you think I should check out, let me know. I'll, I'll see if I can find it if I don't have it already, and I'll, you know, I'll do something with it. So, with that said, let's, uh, let's get started. I'll put on a little Alien RPG background music. Um, okay, so, Alien RPG. This is uh, from Free League. So it's going to be using the Year Zero game engine. For those of you who don't know what that is, stay tuned. Uh, we'll be talking quite a bit about it as we talk about this game. Um, the It's based on the movies. And I have to say, on its face, the book is really pretty. It's It's got some cool art. And, and, and the presentation of the rules is generally pretty good. I'm going to say this now, and I'm going to say it repeatedly. Uh, over the course of the next few videos about this game, I hate the layout. Finding rules in this game can be difficult. Uh, so uh, if, if you're running a one-shot, it's not that big of a deal. But if you're running a campaign where certain rules about space travel or the effects of space travel, for example, you need to have it at your fingertips, it's going to be challenging to find. I actually have tabs with my main book such that with all the flipping through to find the rules my main book is starting to get a little worn out I might have to buy another one I don't know maybe I won't I, I you know but uh, that that's if, if I have a complaint that's it that's that's the big one trying to find rules is hard but if I do if I'm successful with these videos maybe you won't have the problems that I do but okay so character generation and the basics so the first chapter actually goes into the broad strokes of the campaign um, and the system itself or I uh, sorry not the system but the, the world the the universe that you're in I'm gonna skip that now and just jump right into the next big chapter on character generation uh, mainly because um, I want to introduce you to the game system but also, you know, the background stuff and the themes, that's really about introducing you, the player, and Game Master uh, to the story game system that this really is. Uh, so this is very different from Lamentations of the Flame Princess, very different from Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, those who are familiar with the Year Zero game engine probably already know this. So 
So, uh, I had to take a sip of coffee there. So, core concepts for character generation. Career, attributes, skills, talents, stress and health, personal stuff, and gear. On its face, that sounds very similar to what we've seen in other games, uh, the standard D&D type games. Uh, but, once you kind of start peeling back the layers, it gets a little different. Uh, and I don't want to use the word dramatic, but it's pretty significant. So, first thing you got to do when you make a character is pick a career. Um, they're called careers, but I think it's better to understand them as story archetypes. And they're drawn from the movies. Okay, so if you can see here, those are the nine uh, character uh, careers. And I have some images from some of the movies. Uh, hopefully I won't get in trouble for it, but I don't care. Fair use. Uh, but you see, like, the Colonial Marine, like Hicks, right? He actually might be an officer, too. He might he could fall into the uh, realm of officer. But uh, the original movie has uh, the scientist, the roughnecks, uh, the officer. Um, I think... Uh, I can't remember his character's name, but he was, uh, I'm pretty sure, a roughneck as well. But there was also a pilot, um, but you didn't see any Marines, right? Um, I've included Charles S. Dutton's character as an example of how these really aren't careers, but they should be understood as archetypes because there is no uh, reformed criminal. You're right, and that's what Charles S. Dutton's character was in Alien 3. I think he could be in an officer because of his leadership roles. Um, and that's something to kind of consider when you're putting together your, your alien RPG character. Um, certainly, there are other aspects to the game that we will get into in later videos that will help inform this, you know, uh, this decision, such as are you going to play a Marine type game, which is going to be a lot of running and gunning. Are you going to play a space trucker type game, which is essentially the first movie? Uh, or are you going to do a colonial um, colonist type game, which arguably could be the third movie? They're just a prison colony, you know? So, uh, so a lot of that's going to kind of play a role in what kind of character you make. And uh, because this is a storytelling type game as opposed to classic OSR, you know, you're going to want to talk to your game master about, you know, what what you're going to be doing, okay? Um, so, but anyway, that's that's step one. Are you going to play a Marine, a Marshal, an Agent, a Kid, right? Again, archetype, Medic, Officer, Pilot, Roughneck, or Scientist. And then you get into the attributes. So, there's only four, and they're pretty broad. Strength, Agility, Wits, and Empathy, and what they represent raw muscle power, body control speed, sensory perception, intelligence, sanity, personal chari charisma and empathy, uh, ability to ma manipulate others. They're ranked one through five and at character generation, you have a total of 14 points to distribute uh, amongst them. No less than two, no more than four, unless uh, you have a key attribute from the career. So for example, the roughneck and the colonial marine strength is their key attribute so you could you could spend up to five points in strength if you wanted okay uh, whereas like the medic it's empathy um, I think the corporate agent also has empathy as well um, but but that would be the only way to get a five in the starting attribute and once you select an attribute they can't be increased later on in the game they, that's just that's it um, real quick, I want to note about you can play androids in this game. Hence, I have uh, Ash and Bishop, uh, two two side uh, two sides of the same coin, right? Um, they get plus three bonus to two attributes once you spend your points, okay? But they also have some other rules about them. They don't get to push their skill rolls, and I'll get to that in a little bit. They do not suffer stress, and I'll get to that in a little. Uh, they don't need a signature item, which I'll get to that in a little bit. They never make panic checks, and they never suffer... Oh, well, excuse me. They suffer damage a little differently, which will all come at uh, later videos. Uh, but it is possible to play androids. And when I first opened this book and saw that, um, 
I immediately was sort of I had this question pop up like why is why why isn't it just like a separate uh, character class like oh I'm gonna play an android well I think it's so you can have those moments where no one knows who the android is and when the android reveals themselves it's kind of like this jarring story moment right um and maybe someone's biases come out or maybe they suffer some stress from it that sort of thing um so so i think that's sort of the it's meant to be kind of secretive or at least gives you the option to make it secretive skills all right so there's a total of 12 skills three to each of the core uh to each of the corresponding attributes so for example strength has heavy machinery stamina close combat uh, agility is mobility piloting range combat wits is observation com tech and survival empathy is manipulation medical aid and command uh, some of these are pretty self-explanatory right uh, you need close combat to be good at punching things you need range combat to be good at shooting things medical aid is to provide medical aid but some of them are a little strange, right? ComTech, what is that? Well, it's about com your ability to use computers. A uh, thing to remember is that the original movies were made in the late 70s and, and 80s, and early to mid 80s. So there's this sort of retro, uh, I guess retro uh, time period type science level, technology level, a lot of like DOS green screen i think that's cool it's kind of analog right it's not as high tech as we have it today so i don't know if millennials or gen z will have be a little jarred by this but you know you didn't really have the internet i mean it was in its infancy if it existed at all certainly when we get into later videos it is possible to have like an internet type thing but uh it was not like what we have today so uh, ComTech kind of embraces that sort of, it's a mixture of like computer uh, programming, but also understanding the tech behind it uh, and using that to manipulate the computer, the programs. Uh, another one to kind of explain, heavy machinery is kind of a catch-all. It's more than just knowing how to operate a loader or one of the robot suits that Ripley was using to kill the alien queen. Um, it's It also is for doing things like trying to jury rig and open a bulkhead that has dropped right and you got to get past it right so you pull off the panels on the side and start manipulating the hydraulics on the uh, uh, you know within the wall so the the uh, uh the bulkhead you know raises so you can get through it uh, and hopefully before the alien gets you right uh manipulation is exactly what it is it can be used to manipulate manipulate other players characters uh, similarly command uh, allows you to assist other players and their characters to reduce stress and still function in high stressful situations so um, you know very useful skill there mobility is I don't want to use the phrase catch-all but it does cover a lot can be used for trying to get through uh, an area of a space station that has no gravity right but it's also used for sneaking around you know, so if you're trying to move silently, that sort of thing. Um, so with, at character generation, you have 10 points and you can spend them however you want. However, you're limited to one rank and a skill outside your career. And those skills that fall under your career get can go up to a maximum of three ranks. Um, and each career has three skills that are associated with it. So again, good example would be the... Uh, the Marine, uh, they have close combat, uh, I believe stamina and range combat, right? Whereas the pilot is going to have piloting, I believe com tech and mobility. So don't quote me on those. I'm going by memory, but uh, but that's that's kind of how it works. So you spend those points, and there you have it. So what does all this mean? Well, I'm going to get into some game mechanics now. So rolling the dice. So you have basically what you're called a check is called for. You add your attribute and skill rank to form your base dice for the task. Okay, so if you have a, th if if it's a heavy machinery type check, and you have three strength and one heavy machine, one rank and heavy machinery, you're going to roll four base dice, and all you need is to roll one six. If you do, you succeed. If you roll multiple sixes, you achieve some kind of stunt 
And that's sort of, I describe it as sort of the player gets to take over the narration just for a split second and sort of explain like how awesome their heavy machinery role was. So like that example of jury rigging the bulkhead, maybe they jury rig it in such a time that it opens so the players can get through it and then it drops back down and thereby creating a barrier between them and the alien that's charging down the uh, corridor towards them. You know what I mean? Something like that. Uh, and now the, the game master has to figure out, okay, well, you just blocked my alien. What do I do now? You know, that sort of thing. Um, the dice pool can be increased by gear you, you're carrying. Uh, certain weapons will give you a plus one, for example, to your ranged combat. Uh, you can get a plus one to, di uh, to the dice pool if you're assisted by another player um, and the reason is you only get one roll I don't know how many of you may have been in games where your your players are have to pass some kind of skill check and the first guy who volunteers fails so the next guy said the next player says well I'll try and then he fails and then the next player says well I'll try you know well it's kind of silly right and um and I, it always run, it, I've always had issues with that, you know. So I, I basically end up telling them, okay, if you just spent 30 minutes trying to figure this out, right? Um, here, it's it's one action, it's one chance, and if you can't get that bulkhead open, well, it looks like you're facing the alien, you know. Sorry, sucks to be you. <laughs> um, I, the storyteller may also decide to utilize some optional rules that are in the book, like. Uh, making a, a task more difficult or, or less difficult, and that can take away or add to your dice pool. Um, what I really like about this game system, too, is there's this concept of pushing the roll, and this gives you a re-roll. So if, let's say, you roll those four dice and you get nothing, um, so it's a failure. Well, you really need to get this bulkhead open because the alien's marching on down that corridor towards you, so you opt to push the roll. That allows you a re-roll, but what it does is it adds stress to your character. So you get a stress point, and that stress point is translated to a stress die that you add to your pool. Um, I'll get into that a little bit more in a few slides and in more in-depth later on in future videos, but that stress die can help you succeed, but it also adds a chance for panic. Okay, so character generation talents so this is another thing that you can use to sort of differentiate your marine or your um, uh, kid or scientist from the next one okay basically they're think of them like feats from like third edition D D. you know they're just tricks and minor abilities that you get every character starts with one and it's usually one associated with your career Every career has a set of unique talents to them, three each, but there's also a general list that is accessible to all. Uh, one of my favorite ones is the Colonial Marine uh, talent banter. Basically, you can reduce the stress level of those within short range of you by two steps for every turn spent in a safe sp place. So if the players have a lot of stress and they find a safe space and they announce, hey, we're going to sit here and try to calm down, the, some of the rules in the game allow you to start reducing stress because of that. But be, if you have banter, that increases the recovery from stress. Um, one of my favorite examples from the movie, and I have Vasquez here, she's so badass, right, uh, was when um, Bill Paxton's character says, hey, has anybody ever mistaken you for a man? And she's like, no, you? It's one of my favorite lines from the movie. Uh, that's some banter, right? Um, I also have an example of from the general list, that's stoic. When you roll for a stamina check, you can use your wits attribute instead of your strength attribute. So you could have a physically weak character, but who has a high wits, and then you get him stoic, and then he'll be able to go toe to toe with like a colonial marine or a roughneck. Okay, um, but but that's talents, and um, you can get more talents as you advance your character, and I'll cover that in just a minute. All right, stress and health. All right, so health is pretty straightforward. It's calculated by your strength score. You have a number of health equal to your strength attribute. When your health is dropped to zero, 
you aren't necessarily dead, but you are broken and suffer critical injury. And there's an entire chart. It's a D66 table that you roll. And that could result in death, could result in a crippling or something, okay? Um, stress, however, is not a separate hit point system. Okay, so this is kind of like your sanity. This is how you track your sanity. It's not like Call of Cthulhu, which is like a separate hit point system. Not a big fan of that, i got to be honest. Uh, that might make me a heretic amongst old school gamers, but I, I prefer this mechanic over what Call of Cthulhu does. Um, but as you accumulate stress, it will start to affect your rolls. So let's say you've pushed, number one, you've pushed your roll to open up that bulkhead and you've escaped okay presumably you already have a stress point for seeing the alien okay so now you have two stress points because you had to push a roll okay and then you know maybe the next turn um you realize the uh i don't know one of your one of your comrades is a is a uh is a is an android so that might give you another stress point so now you have three uh for every stress point you have that turns into a stress dice that adds to your pool so uh, i have a picture of my dice that i have so i have a set of each and these are of course sold separately by free league uh it's kind of expensive but you don't need them uh but essentially the way the stress dice work is if you roll a one on them you risk panic okay uh, and if you you have to make a panic check, and I'll cover that in another another uh, video, but uh, but they're represented by the face huggers and the sixes. The successes are represented by the target reticle there. So uh, basically, the more stress you get, the harder the game is going to be. One of the the classic examples of someone panicking is Bill Paxton's character when he's shouting "Game over, man." You know, uh, absolutely wonderful uh, mechanic that has translated from the film, I think. And in one of my first Halloween games I ran of this, my buddy, Cody, uh, who is in my Lamentations game, uh, actual play, he was playing the pilot, and they were hoping to use the pilot to escape. Well, he accumulated so much stress that he was panicking every time he tried to do an action. Uh, he, he he was a little frustrated <laughs> as a player, but uh, it, it was pretty hilarious. Like all his character did was run and hide, um, and he couldn't. At this point, you really do lose control of your character. It's it's a great mechanic. I, I absolutely love it. Um, but we'll cover more of it as we go on. Okay, so as this is a story game, uh, it has personal stuff. Okay, obviously you got to pick a name. Each career entry has some examples for you if you're having trouble kind of getting into the flavor. I do have a minor critique here, uh, and we will go into this in further videos, but they, this book goes into a lot of detail um, with respect to the background and the story that your players are going to be in this universe while they're playing Alien RPG, and including, uh, the authors include like these socio-political factions that I think are, are really neat. Uh, one of them is called the United Progressive Peoples. It's like Russia and China, communists, Russia and China team up, right? And they're out conquering the galaxy. Um, and uh, then you have the Three World Empire, which is India, Japan, and England, and then the United Americas. Okay, all of the uh, names are sort of that they give as examples are all like English speaking. I would have liked, you know. Not for any sake of diversity or anything like that, but just to help with immersion and give players who might want to play a Russian or a Chinese character, you know, someone from the United Progressive Peoples, you know, or someone who wants to play Three World Empire, you know, an example of a Japanese name or uh, an Indian name, you know. So that the minor, minor critique, but it would have been nice. Um, appearance, uh, kind of, you know, a throwaway notion, but um again because this is a story game i i think it is kind of important to mention because you want to have a defining characteristic to make your character memorable okay um in uh my mother mothership campaign i was in 
which is a very different game. It's a lot of similar concepts, a lot of overlapping concept. It's space, sci-fi, horror, much like Alien RPG, different system, but a lot of overlapping concepts. I played this Marine character called Lieutenant Colonel uh, Remy LaRue, uh, and I would always describe him as aggressively chewing on a titanium toothpick, you know, and that was just something that, you know, would constantly come up and people, you know, started kind of recognizing him, you know. Uh, but that's something I think is good to do for a story type game like Alien RPG. Now, here's where the character's concept and your character really becomes part of the game. You have a personal agenda and some buddies and rivals that you kind of uh, uh, announce during character generation. So, uh, personal agenda is like this angle or some goal they're trying to achieve the extent of it will depend on whether you're engaged in cinematic play or campaign play cinematic play is essentially a one-shot campaign play is as exactly as it sounds i'll go into the uh into that more detail in later videos of course um but this could result in experience points if you're pursuing your personal agenda Buddies and rivals, very similar, can result in extra XP if you use these. Basically, you choose a PC that's going to be your rival and a PC that's going to be your buddy. And it's helpful for the GM to create all kinds of situations. I have Ripley and Burke uh, here um, as great examples of the personal agenda. We know Ripley's right off the bat, right in the beginning of the movie, right? Because she's like... We're not going there to study them. We're not going there to observe them. We're going there to destroy them, right? And then Burke lies and says, yeah, sure, of course, because his personal agenda is to actually bring one back. And that can create some really cool tension uh, and some cool storylines and whatnot for your game. And I think we all know Burke is the company man, right? So, okay. Gear. So uh, this is pretty straightforward, and Alien RPG's gear, it, I'm not going to go through the exhaustive list because there is a lot in there, everything from computer equipment, uh, audio-visual equipment, weapons, vehicles, spaceships. Um, I'm not going to go into all of it, but the gear can give you bonuses to rolls. You start off with two items that are listed in the career section. Um, and it's just sort of assumed you have civilian clothing or uniform. You get two full reloads with the weapon, and you get some starting cash, and it's in American currency. When I start talking about campaign play, I'll, I'll get into some of my issues with this game system uh, and campaign play and all that stuff. Uh, but you basically are starting with a few items, and then that's it. And then you have some cash that you'll get to start with and maybe if you have a job and you should have a job uh weekly cash in you know infusion so that you can buy stuff later on there is this thing concept called the signature item and this is similar to your defining characteristic and it is a site of, it's an item that will be associated with your character and you will use it to help you reduce stress like you could take a turn um or maybe it's a shift i can't remember i'll get into that in later videos but you'll basically spend time with your signature item it's sort of like a way of you describing how you just sort of relax um newt her signature item was that doll's head right uh and then i have henry d Stan harry dean stanton uh criminally underrated actor here his was his hat you know whenever i think of alien and his character i think of that hat so um but there but there's that okay a few other things to know uh, there is encumbrance rules, but they're very general. Um, you basically can carry a number of regular sized items equal to double your strength rating without problems. Heavy items count as two regular items and take up two rows on your character sheet. Light items count as a half a regular item and will take up two can take up one row. Um, and then if they're really light, maybe four per row. And then tiny items are so small they won't affect your encumbrance. The rule of thumb is if you can fit it in the palm of your hand and close your fist around it, you know, it's it's negligible. You can act over encumbered, but basically it's going to affect your mobility rolls when you're trying to run around or crawl in combat. And if you fail, you got to drop something or you stay put. So if you're trying to escape from the uh, alien and maybe you're carrying a buddy, 
you know, and it's you're pretty slowed down. Eh, maybe you got to drop the buddy, or maybe you don't drop the buddy. You drop your gun, you know, something like that, right? Uh, there is some rules about consumables, which are interesting. Basically, it's a resource die, um, and uh, consumables uh, to determine whether or not you've used up consumables, you roll your stress dice, and if a one or face hugger is rolled, the supply rating goes down by one. And of course, the more you carry, the more slots they take up. Um, but resources and consumables aren't tracked unless it's necessary. So this c keeps it kind of up to the game master's discretion. And uh, the four main consumables are air, water, food, and power. Um, air is kind of interesting because it happens every turn, whereas water is once per day, food is once per day, that kind of thing. Um, it's, it's kind of interesting. And then developing your character, experience points. Uh, basically, you get one point of experience for every yes that to one of these questions, um, and then and that's pretty much it. Like, there's no XP for killing monsters, really. Uh, there's there's no XP for treasure. Um, well, kind of if you earn some money, I suppose. But um, and then you can spend these XP points by improving skills. There is sort of a training skill kind of rule. Like if you have zero ranks in, uh, in something, like let's say ComTech, you can pick up ComTech com with five experience points, but you have to have used it that session. Or, oh, and succeeded. Or have someone with at least one rank in ComTech train you for, like an for I believe, an entire shift. There's a... Um, there's a uh, scene in Aliens where you have Ripley being instructed by Hicks how to use a gun. You know, it's that kind of thing. Talents you can pick up. Um, and again, 5 XP per talent. But again, that requires some practice and a successful wits roll. Uh, and you can only make one attempt per day. Uh, if you're instructed by a teacher, it's an automatic success. And then at the end of every game session, you can change your buddy and rival, uh, depending on how things go. Um, but I think that's it. Yep, pretty much that's it for now. Uh, we'll be going into deeper rules on uh, how this game works, combat, travel, uh, the background, and campaign play versus cinematic play. Uh, I can tell you right now, I have had a lot of fun with one-shots on this. Campaign play, it's a little trickier, but we'll get into that. Um, but that's all I have, guys. I really appreciate you uh, checking me out and watching the video. If this is something you uh, like, hit like and subscribe, bell icon, yada, yada, yada. And until next time, I'll see you.